Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. This is a very AMD-centric video because, well, there's just an awful lot of AMD news currently floating around, including the creator of Linux, Linus Torvalds, commenting on AMD's security situation, and we have an update to that in a general sense anyway. Then we're going to move over to AMD's processor sales figures because they are very very good indeed how good well it looks like they are on track to return to athlon 64 levels of market share which is very impressive and then we shall finish the video off with some performance numbers of the ryzen 7 2700x that's right there have been more benchmarks that have leaked but as i said we're going to start things out with the security situation and this has two distinctive parts. The first is comments from Linus Torvalds. And he's a fairly vocal individual, that's putting it mildly. And he has indeed decided to go to Google Plus and give some comments regarding this whole situation. I'm going to read this out verbatim. It looks like the IT security world has hit a new low. If you work in security and think you have morals, I think you might want to add the tagline, No, really, I'm not a whore. Pinky promise to your business card because I thought the whole industry was corrupt before, but it's getting ridiculous. At what point will security people admit they have an attention-whoring problem? Linus then continues by telling us that I refuse to link to that garbage, but yes, it looks more like stock, stock manipulation excuse me, than a security advisory to me. I blame the journalists, but let's face it, it's the security industry that has taught everybody not to be critical of their findings. Think of the children. With an end quote. I'm actually, generally speaking, inclined to agree with his statements, although I do feel he's perhaps gone a little far in the security industry. In my opinion, a lot of folks that work in security are pretty good eggs. And yes, that's a terrible term, but there we have it. And I do feel that a great many there do just want to try and do their best for customers and, of course, the company they work for. But I am very inclined to agree with Linus on his point of view that in this instance it does seem very suspicious and I discussed the whole situation at length yesterday in a rather lengthy video so I'll link that in the description to this video if you want a full autopsy I suppose of the situation on the first day but there has been a small series of updates to this CTS Labs, who are of course the Israeli-based IT security research company that did actually unveil this information, has stated to Tech Power Up that it did indeed send AMD, <coughs> along with other big tech companies, a quote, complete research package, which includes a full technical write-up on vulnerabilities, functional proof of concept of exploit code, and instructions on how to reproduce each vulnerability. CTS Labs also confirmed to Tech Power Up that it did indeed share the research package with AMD just 24 hours prior to making the report public. So what does it use to defend its actions? Why did it only give 24 hours? Well, it says, and I quote, if you look at the situation in the following way, right now the public knows about vulnerabilities and their implications. AMD is fully informed in developing patches and major security companies are also informed and in working on mitigation. So, has this had any impact in AMD's market share? Well, they're down about 2%-ish. Two, 2 and this is, as I'm recording this, which is currently 6.34pm on the 14th of March 2018. And according to the Googles, as I said, they're down about 2.2-ish you percent. Know, and that means that currently they're trading at $11.4 per share. And a couple of days ago, well, back basically in uh, the 13th of March, they hit a high of essentially just a smidgen and jot, an iota, under $12 a share. What does that mean? It does mean that they're being impacted, because of course it does. But it seems like the general consensus on the street is that they're not, at the moment, investors, of course, not giving in to FUD. They're giving AMD the benefit of the doubt. And my whole thing with this is that while some of these issues will have to wait, of course, for AMD to kind of formally comment on this, but while some of these issues are certainly concerning, it's not exactly easy to simply 
execute this stuff. I mean, one of them once again requires physical access to the machine and flash the BIOS, and others actually require elevated administrative privileges. You can argue that if you have that level of access anyway, that you can already do pretty bad stuff to the system. And yes, of course, this, I'm not trying to say, mitigates the issues if they are present, but it's simply to say that I'm less inclined to throw AMD under the bus yet, but we'll have to see how this, of course, develops over the next several days. I do have a lot more I could say on this issue, but frankly, I do want AMD to comment, and I want to know if any of these allegations are true, and if so, how bad actually are they? Can it be patched? Does it require a software update via Windows? Can it be patched via a BIOS update, in which case it just renders this whole thing mute? And even if so, I don't, once again, my whole thing, I do not like how this was handled. I think AMD should have at least been given a couple of weeks. My personal opinion is 14 days is minimum for the company to at the very least have an understanding of what's going on. But that's just my opinion. So in all of the AMD news yesterday, I didn't actually really get a chance to cover this. And that is that Ryzen has had its one year anniversary webinar, which AMD held. And it's essentially acted as an investor's recap on the success story of Ryzen. This is probably another reason that AMD share prices haven't dipped too badly. And Ryzen 2018 rollout, <coughs> excuse me, is looking very impressive. One of the things that we are definitely seeing is an increase in the sheer sales throughput of AMD processors, but we'll get to that in just a second, because another thing that's been confirmed is there'll be 60 plus new Ryzen OEM platforms that are released throughout 2018, which is obviously a very good thing for AMD's overall ecosystem. And Jim Anderson, the Senior Vice President and GM of Computing and Graphics at AMD, mentioned that in the short term at least, they are looking to reach the same level of success that they hit during the early 2000s and this of course was thanks to the Athlon 64 CPUs. At the time by the way Athlon 64s were just absolutely bonkers. I mean to be honest with you AMD did really good through the Durons, the Athlons. The Durons for those unfamiliar was like the the cheapo version of the of the Athlons and it, you could essentially think of it as the Celeron versus the Pentium at the time and AMD did a really good job of competing with Intel. And according to Jim, he said, I don't see any reason we can't get back to the historic, uh, historical, excuse me, share levels that AMD enjoyed during the past. And back then in the early 2000s, the market share was about 20% for the desktop, while it was ever so slightly lower for notebooks. But that was very impressive. I mean, you know, that's essentially one in five systems. And we can see in the appropriately titled The Ryzen Effect, the industry multi-level CPU performance improvements, and this is from the 200-250 US dollar desktop CPU, that's with MSRP pricing, and that's very impressive at the sheer level of performance increase that we're getting at that price difference. Now, about the 200 bucks level, honestly, is very competitive for CPUs because you're now at the point where you've not really entered the high-end territory but you've you know a lot of gamers want to go into that kind of mid-range and you could see the difference I love how the shares how the slides are sorry how all of the graphs are blue the um, you've got like one percent in 2013 nine percent in 2014 you can read them and then it goes up of course 78 percent and a lot of this is quite simple if you look at the multi-threading side of things anyway Intel didn't really do that much. I mean, there were a few tweaks here and there with the various architectures that did slightly in tweak and improve multi-threading side of performance, but not greatly. And of course, this is primarily, at least in AMD's case, a simple way of just throwing more threads at the problem. And now we're going to discuss the final piece of news, which is Ryzen 7 2700X, because yet further leaks have appeared on the internets. So what we have here is very simple. Geekbench is, of course, a pretty popular benchmarking application. It is Geekbench 4.1.1. It's the tryout version. And once again, we're seeing a Ryzen 7 2700X, which, of course, has four cores, 16 threads. The base clock is 3.7 gigahertz. It boosts up to 4.35 gigahertz and has a TDP of 105 watts. But no, it does not make you toast. Now, what we have is a score of 4,746 for the single uh, core score, 
and it's so weird to say, and 24,772 for the multi-core score. Okay, you're going to say to me, well, that's great, but how does this compare to, let's say, oh, I don't know, the 1700X? Well, of course, and the normal caveat supply depends on the RAM speed, depends on if there's an overclock, it depends on BIOS and God knows what else. But essentially, it's around the 42, 4300 for single core. Multi core is around the 21,000 mark. So, yes, we're looking at a performance increase here. The official baseline scores for the 1700X are around the low 4000 mark and around the 21,000 mark for multi core. So, yes, that's a pretty damn impressive increase to say the least. How does it compare against, let's say, the i7 8700K? Well, single core score. According to the top of the line is 5930, 25,817 for multi-thread. The memory for this particular processor was 16 gigabytes and was running at 2.4 gigahertz. But there are one or two things we do need to take into consideration. The first, it was an X370 board, so we don't know whether perhaps another BIOS revision is going to slightly improve performance. Second thing is it's not a 400 series board. What does that mean? Well, it essentially means that Precision Boost Overdrive will not function. So there is a possibility that we could also see increased clock speed and increased performance there as well. Of course, these are by far the be-all and end-all for benchmarks. And we have seen previous leaks in the past, including Sysoft Sandra, and of course we also saw Ada64 with the cache and memory benchmarks, and we did see definitely an improvement in latency. For example, the 1700X, if we look at the level 3 cache, was 11.2 NS on the 1700X, whereas comparatively the 2700X is 9.4 NS, and this is obviously a good thing. Lower latency equals, well, faster retrieval of data. And also memory latency as well is slightly improved, which is obviously a good thing. And this, of course, is still using the same memory configuration, which is uh, RAM running on, uh, sorry, running at 2661, and that's with timings of 16, 16, 16, 36. And just so there's no hinky funny business, and that is also utilizing the same ASRock X370 motherboard and the same BIOS. But anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.